What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby, you're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually, the worst, but that's what makes them the best. What is going on, OTB Nation? Welcome into episode number 266 of the allegedly award nominated, honorably mentioned, number nine NCAA ranked, and of course, viewable on YouTube outside the box podcast. The official lacrosse podcast on the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network. It's KB and Deej coming at you with a loaded show this week as we've got lots and lots to dive into from NLL, PLL, college, the Japan series, free agency, trade deadlines. It's all happening at once and we're going to dive into all of it. But before we get started, make sure you guys are following us at OTB Laxpod Twitter Instagram, shout out to Shrek. Somebody was asking for uh, their favorite lacrosse Twitter accounts to follow. Gave us the shout. Shout out to Shrek. Good to see that you're uh, alive and well. We haven't seen the Shrek rankings in a while, so it's nice to see uh, we get recognized there. Does that mean we move up in the Shrek rankings? Um, well, we were like number, we were like the third, third uh, account. Pretty good. Tag. So I mean, does that make us third? Three. That's a new high, I think. That's that's a new high. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Shrek. Um, follow us at OTB Laxpot Twitter, Instagram. Follow Deej on Twitter at SCS underscore Next Great. Follow me at KBIZZL three one one. Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, we're there, so go subscribe. Leave a five star review. On Apple, leave a five star rating on Spotify. Make sure you're following the show uh, across the board there. It really does help the show continue growing, helps more people find OTB, helps more people find our network as a whole. Uh, so go subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Just search Outside the Box or search Underground Sports Philadelphia, and all of our shows pop up. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. It's where you get full video episodes of OTB. And all of your favorite podcasts on our uh, podcast network. You get live streams, clips, shorts, original content, all that good stuff is on our YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Smash that like button. Ring the bell icon. Comment down below your thoughts on everything DJ and I discuss on the episode this week. And, of course, go get your merch from our amazing merch partners, PHI Apparel Company, the best in the game. Uh, all your exclusive Outside the Box podcast uh, merch is available on their website. It is the number one place to go to get merch. Uh, they're supporting us in so many endeavors and couldn't be happier that they're our exclusive merch partners. You guys can go to phiapparel.co. Use code UNDERGROUND and you get 10% off any and all merch orders. You can use that code anytime. Get your OTB hoodies, shirts. Tag us when you get your merch. We want to see where you're rocking your merch from. Uh, wear it to your favorite NLL game, PLL weekends, college games. We want to see that OTB merch across the nation. Deej, what the hell is popping, brother? Bro, season started this week. We've had four practices so far, and I'm very excited the way uh, the season's going so far. Got one of my uh, teammates from high school to come back. He's an assistant coach helping me out, so that's awesome. Um, we're trending in the right direction. We're going to win some games this year. So um, one of these Thursdays, I will talk to you um, having had my first win. It'll be Victory as, Thursday. As in by, yes. It well, will technically for the listeners, Victory Friday, but. Yeah, yeah. And it will, in fact, be Victory Thursday slash Friday. You'll have here, to hit the, on uh, the pod. You'll have to hit the scene from the movie where, like, where the guy's on the top of the, Victory! <laughs> nah, I'm going to come in. I got something planned. I got to swing. I got to sing like Sweet Victory. Spongebob or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to do something crazy. Yeah, that'll be my, my first win. I, it won't be next week, even though we have a game on Wednesday. I, I, I can't count 
a JV victory is my first win. We are playing a JV team. Um, so there it is. Yeah, but that's that's Wednesday. A um, couple more days, but I'm excited. Um, team looks really good, and uh, we're up to like 25, 26 guys. So we're trending in the right direction. New unis. So everything's good. Everything's good. Everything is good, and uh, we've got a wild week of NLL action to recap across the board. It, week 15 was one for the books. Lots of stuff went down. Not too much movement in terms of the playoff picture, uh, but this is how week 15 went. Buffalo, once again, this time in overtime, tops Halifax 10-9. Calgary beats Colorado 16-10. Albany falls to Toronto. 12 to 6. The Wings fall in New York 13 to 10. Saskatchewan falls to San Diego 12 11. Vancouver from the clouds beats Las Vegas 14 to 5. And the Rochester Nighthawks hold off the Georgia Swarm 19 18. The standings look a little something like this Buffalo all alone at the top in the East at 10 and 2. Toronto, a game back in the loss column, only a half game back overall at 10 and 3. Rochester sitting at 9 and 3. Philly at 5 and 6. Halifax at 5 and 7. The New York Riptide at 3 and 9. The Georgia Swarm at 2 and 8. And the Albany Firewolves at 2 and 9. And then in the West, it is the San Diego Seals all alone at the top at 8 and 2. Calgary at 8 and 4. Panther City at 7 and 5, Saskatchewan and Colorado both at 5 and 6, the Desert Dogs at 4 and 7 and the Vancouver Warriors hanging on by a thread at 3 and 9. Did anything stand out to you this week, DJ? Anything surprise you uh or kind of uh impress you? Um uh, mm. No, not really. Um I'm trying to think of who I picked and how games went. I think I went four and two, four and three, something like that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think it was just a pretty, I won't say basic week, but like, you know, the stars shined as expected. Um, goalies played good all around. Like that's That's been the thing this year for me, like, there's been just very, very good goalie play all around the league, like minus Georgia, obviously, with like their scenario. But like even their goaltending has gotten better throughout the year. But like it's just been very good goaltending around the entire league. And that also goes to show that the scores are still what they are. And that's mm -hmm. how good the offense, you know, that's just how good these offenses are as well. Like we're getting spoiled with the amount of good lacrosse we get year round truly we are getting spoiled oh, yeah i think the one absolutely thing absolutely love it to piggyback off of you goalie play wise because <clears throat> i saw it go down in person that young bull dunkerly riptide might have found somebody no slight to either orleman but dunkerly was a fucking brick wall on saturday night on long island that boy was stopping any shot that came his way. Now, granted, I do want to say, like, some of the shots the Wings were putting up were tired shots. And by tired, I mean you could tell the Wings have played three games in a week uh, type tired. Not like that they were lazy shots. It was just like it's a usual shot you wouldn't see a Mitch Jones or a Joe Resiteritz take, but they were just trying to do as much as they could to keep the Wings in the game. Um, but you could see like the exhaustion in their legs mostly, but Dunkerley for only his second NLL game, <laughs> he's now two and zero in his NLL career. Um, he was fantastic. He was very impressive, uh, for him to go out there and, and play the way he did. And Rich Lisk might've found, uh, a piece for that team on the back end. Now I think it's just, you know, building up that defense more. Uh, than what they have and, and having guys that aren't uh, as injury prone and a little bit younger on the defensive side. But Dunkerley might be a guy that's in that goalie rotation. You know, he and Orleman as a tandem might be 
a nice, you know, one two punch. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about it in the PLL how important having a good backup goalie can be. You know, we've seen Phipps come in and be good for them. Uh, we've seen JD Colarusso come in and be good for Atlas after their injury to Jack McCann. And we've seen the Archers run a two goalie system and it actually worked for a while. Jack uh-huh. Kelly. Yeah, Jack Kelly's come in and been great for the Woods. But then you also have, like, Austin Cott, who is just, like, such an energy guy, a smarts guy, doing, like, the right thing on the sideline at all times for chaos during their championship run. So it's just like – Matt DeLuca. Yeah, Matt DeLuca doing the same thing for the Water Dogs this year. Like, there's so so many different ways that goalies affect the game that, like, you can never really have too many good goalies. Mm-hmm. So – I, I love it um, for a guy who may or may not end up as a Rip Tide fan one day. <laughs> um, my other takeaway from this week was, like, what the fuck happened to Las Vegas? Like, golly. In a game that, like, we expected to be close. Could have been a coin flip either way. To get obliterated like that against a Vancouver team. No offense to Vancouver, but, like, Everyone kind of knows they're dead in the water and they're looking towards the future. To do that when you're still swirling around in the mix trying to make a wild card, that's a tough. That's a tough one. I think they were trying to send a message though, maybe. Like, hey, we're we know the circumstance we're in, but we're here for it. Yeah, that was a tough we're here one. For it. Um Great win by Calgary. Much needed win for them to kind of keep pace with the Seals, with them being uh, a game back overall in the standings. Two in the loss column, though. Um, So much needed win there. But week 15 was a doozy. That brings us to Deja's State of the Fandom. It's brought to you by our awesome partners over at Tomahawk Shades, the best small batch eyewear in the game. Guys, sunlight's out longer and longer. Now daylight savings time has arrived which means we get more and more sunlight, which is great. And you got to protect those eyes. You know what Deej is wearing when he's coaching out there with the kitties? His tomahawk shades. You know what Deej is wearing when he's going to events and functions for the day job? His tomahawk shades. You know what the boy's wearing all the time, whether it's indoors or outdoors? The tomahawk shades. Part owned by Kyle Harrison and Chris Hogan. Ever heard of them? Uh... They're a quality product for a fraction of the price of the big retailers. And we're giving you a massive hookup along with it. You guys can go to TomahawkShades.com, use promo code USP for 25% off at checkout. Any order, any time. Sign up for their rewards program too. It's very beneficial. Uh, But TomahawkShades.com, promo code USP for 25% off your order. Deej. Your state of the fandom after week 15, how is it looking? How's it taking shape? Obviously, you've thrown in that caveat that the team has to make the playoffs this year. How's it looking? How, how's the state of the fandom? Um, This year, <clears throat> this week, everybody's kind of safe. Vegas, I can't write you off after one week, but that was scary. Um, like you just mentioned, like Vancouver, like, isn't really in a position to be beating anyone like that. Um, so it was alarming, but nothing that I can't look past right now. Um, nothing I'm going to hang over their head for a while. It is what it is. Early season or mid season, let's leave it be. But that is concerning moving forward. But I don't think anything's really changed because we're not close enough to playoffs yet to start really picking people apart. So everyone's still in the mix going into week 16 of NLL action, which brings us to our week 16 preview. Deej, we've got quite the schedule on deck for St. Patrick's Day weekend in the NLL, which is one of the more uh, fun and uh, rowdy weekends across the league. We get great jerseys. Uh, We got two St. Paddy's Day jerseys that'll be on display, one by a team who gets down with the boys and one team that... The players get down with us, but the uh, social team does not for whatever reason. Shout out to Chris for uh, tagging us on that tweet. Uh, But this is the schedule this week. Friday night, we've got two nightcap games for us East Coasters. Uh, 9 o'clock, 
Saskatchewan versus Calgary in a tradition like no other. That is St. Patrick's Day in the NLL when those two teams are playing. A nice little prairie rivalry. And then 10 o'clock Eastern time, San Diego at Vancouver on St. Patty's Day. And then we kick it to Saturday, 11 a.m., everybody. Rise and shine, 11 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, it is a bark in the bowl at the Wells Fargo Center with the Philadelphia Wings and Georgia Swarm. <laughs> Going to be all the doggos on deck. Uh, very excited for an elevator full of dogs on Saturday morning. Uh, and then we kick it to 6 o'clock. Nice little break in there for NCAA tournament watchers as well. Uh, Toronto at Halifax, 6 Eastern time on Saturday. 7.30 Eastern time, Albany at New York. Also at 7.30, Colorado at Buffalo in a rematch of the NLL Finals last year. Finally get the rematch we've all been waiting for. It should have been an opening night, but I digress. Uh, then at, I believe this is 8 o'clock. Yes, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Las Vegas at Panther City, the battle of expansion. Uh, and then Sunday, we got Sunday lacrosse again. And everyone's been tweeting about it. I think you agree with it as well. The NLL schedule post-Super Bowl should have at least one Sunday game for the rest of the season. Like, every week after the Super Bowl is over, the NLL should be on ESPN, ESPN+, Plus, whatever it may be, at least one game every Sunday after the Super Bowl. Needs to happen. Hopefully ESPN uh, obliges. But we've got Philly at Rochester. 3 p.m. on Sunday. What stands out to you as we head into the final week of action, Deej, before the NLL trade deadline? The one, the lack of trades. Um, nobody's really made any moves, but like I get it because everybody's kind of found the identity for the for the year, what their team looks like for the year, riding that momentum, and they're really just trying to hone in on that and and. Um, and get ready for the playoffs. A lot of teams are in playoff contention, so I think that's really what's stopping teams from even thinking about moves, really, because it's either um, you make a, a big move that goes, I'm trying to make the NLL finals, or you don't make any moves at all for most teams right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just because of where they are um, in terms of standings. Like, I think there's probably if we were if we really look at records, there's probably like three or four teams that are eliminated per se, mathematically from playoffs right now. Everyone else is definitely in in the hunt and up for grabs. So it's it's tough for anybody to make moves. But at the same time, looking at this week, there's a lot of games going into like that playoff thing that we're talking about. Like if a couple people lose games and they go from a second place, a third place to a fourth or fifth place. And then, you know, you win a game and all of a sudden you're in second place and you're like, oh, shit, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to the playoffs for sure right now. And, and if I keep winning, that's probably going to remain the case. Like, it, it changes a lot. Uh, wins and losses this week make the standings move like crazy. Yeah, I mean, we get our first battle of Philly and Rochester, which we have three, including this weekend. Uh, throughout the rest of the season, Toronto and Halifax is a huge matchup for both teams. Um, you know, I mean, even for the Riptide, that's a big game for them to kind of stay alive in the potential, uh, you know, Eastern Conference playoff picture as they are, you know, right behind Halifax now, two games behind them and uh, three back of the wings in the loss column. But. A lot of importance game, and I mean that Saskatchewan Calgary game is is massive as well in the West. So, lots of stuff to uh, break down there. We do want to preface this is the last show before the NLL trade deadline this year, which happens at Monday. I think the deadline is three or four Eastern. I'm not a hundred percent certain. Um, two moves have been made so far. Uh, that happened this week. We had. The Albany Firewolves trading Greg Downing to Toronto in exchange for their 2023 second round pick. And then Albany uh, acquiring Marshall Paulus from Saskatchewan in exchange for their 2025 second round pick. 
that one more of a head scratcher to me than them trading off Greg Downing. Um, I have heard rumblings, KB sources right here, Deej. Uh, Connor Kelly is on the trade block, and he has been placed on the uh, short-term holdout list by the Albany Firewolves. Allegedly, from what KB sources has been uh, hearing, is that Albany wants a first-round pick for Connor Kelly. This is no offense to Connor Kelly. I don't see any team out there sending a first-round pick to Albany knowing that Albany's kind of ready to tank and go all in on Dyson Williams to give them more ammunition in the first round uh, at any point. And I just don't think any of the contenders right now would be like, yeah, I'm going to use my, my blue chip first round pick on Connor Kelly. Well, is Rochester going to give him up? I don't think so. I think he's going to be Albany. Free. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of Connor Fields. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I, people would be giving away five first-round picks for Connor Fields. Yeah, I don't see anyone giving up a first-round pick for Connor Kelly. Is that what and that's no slight to And that's no slight <clears throat> to C.K. Fody. It's just he hasn't been productive enough in the NLL to warrant this trade in the NLL. Like the facts are facts. But, like, I, yeah, I – don't think he – oh, man. I just thought about that. Like, what is his trade value then at that point is now my question. Connor Kelly-wise, I think to the contenders, which if we take a look at the contenders of where Connor Kelly would fit as well, that's an important look. I think he fits more in the West Coast scenarios than the East because you look at the Bandits – are not going to trade for Connor Kelly. The Rock are not going to trade for Connor Kelly. Uh, the Nighthawks, I don't see them trading for Connor Kelly. The Wings are not going to trade for Connor Kelly. Halifax is not. I don't think the Riptide are going to go acquire Connor Kelly uh, at this point in the season. But you look at a team like San Diego, Connor Kelly's not going to play because of the talent that's on that team. Uh Calgary maybe is an interesting one, but I don't know if, you know, it's so weird with the NLL because of guys like having actual jobs too. Like can CK afford to get out to Calgary every weekend and that type of stuff. Um, Could he go back to Panther city? Maybe it's just such a weird type of year too, where like so many unsuspecting guys are popping off and having great years that like, I don't know if Albany's going to even end up trading him and and getting you know anything back for Connor Kelly at the deadline. Yeah, um, it's just tough because he hasn't been super productive and like there is you know does Georgia trade for him maybe as one of those like but what do they give up? I think if I'm Georgia, I'm comfortable giving up like. Because they always have, like, Georgia stockpiles draft picks like no other, and that's a a well-known fact. Like, I think Georgia can afford to give up a second-round pick for Connor Kelly. And I think if I'm a franchise like Georgia right now, I'd be comfortable antiquating that Connor Kelly is my second-round pick in this X draft. Uh... To pair with... Lyle and Shane and stuff like it's a future move. Like it's obviously like I mean, George is a, future, a long though? shot. Like How, it's it's a next year saying? move. Okay, I'm gonna say because like they, oh, those guys don't have a ton of time, so you can't like. It's a future. Like it's a move you make this year for next year is what I'm getting. Yeah, at, with with a team like Georgia. Yeah, I could see that, but. Georgia's not going to do that. They're just going to blow up and try to make it off from scratch. Like everybody's been doing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any, I don't know if any crazy moves happen at the deadline this year. Like, I think most of the big moves have happened. Like Mitch Jones got dealt. Um, I, I just, I think it's going to be more depth type of trades that teams go and acquire guys for the playoffs to add depth to their team. Like, I would love to see the Wings go out and get another, like, 
in their prime, air quote for the people just listening, defensemen to add to the rotation. Um, I'd love to see, you know, Rochester make one of those type of moves too for their playoff push. You see, like, like a Greg Downing type of trade where he's, you know, a depth guy. He's a little bit older, but like you go and push your chips in to bolster your depth. I think that's going to be the the larger scale type of moves we see at the trade deadline this year. Yeah, I think those might be the only ones we see. I don't know if we're going to see anything else. Everybody seems to be pretty locked and loaded into what they have and, and making that work. They, I think one of the like interesting moves that I might keep an eye on too, this is all speculation and just like would be interesting. Like the pieces Georgia unloads, I would love to see a contender go out and trade for Ethan Walker. I think Ethan Walker is a, a guy that like moves the needle for a team that's trying to go and compete for a championship. Won a championship with the Water Dogs. He knows how to win. He's coming from, you know, University of Denver. Um, I think he's a piece that he's barely scratching the surface in the NLL and can help push a team uh, over the top in terms of, you know, adding that, that difference maker transition midfield type of role to a team. Didn't like that move, huh? No. <laughs> no. I was thinking so hard on it, and then I got lost in my thought, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what move were you mentioning again? I said <laughs> a contender trading for Ethan Walker from Georgia. Oh. I like that for Georgia or for Ethan Walker. Um, it's like a, a save him scenario. Um, but I also see that being like a block. Like, holy shit. That could be like a blockbuster trade that just comes through like right before the young. deadline. He's young. And, but because, you know, they're going to want something substantial back. And it's going to be something that could be like what changes Georgia's season around crazy kind of thing like that or it's like five picks <laughs> and it's just, and it's just like, paying attention to like all the moves that georgia makes too as a whole like yeah players do they trade yeah because you got to imagine they're about to start like unloading and stuff soon yeah like they've got it's just not working no they, they've got pieces to trade off and i think if i'm a team that's a contender or like on the cusp of being in the playoffs i'm calling georgia first ahead of any team just just inquire about every single player on that roster yeah uh perc a while. percent i was gonna say percent chance a lyle rumor happens and percent chance lyle gets traded three percent half percent yeah i was gonna say like 1.5% chance there's a rumor and negative 12% that he gets traded. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can, I mean, we can start the rumor. There you go. Heard it here first. Lyle Thompson on the trade block. Please credit. <laughs> Please credit. So when this actually happens, y'all know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Lyle Thompson Lyle. trade rumors are not legally binding. Uh, <laughs> they are all speculative rumors. Uh, this Very is, speculative. This was all parody. Uh, <laughs> which team do you think, if you had to make a guess, one team from the East, one team from the West, who do you think makes 
a substantial move by Monday. And it, that could be in terms of acquiring or in terms of shipping out. Halifax? And Panther City. I think... I like the Panther City pick. But to just go contrarian so we both have different ones, I'm going to say Saskatchewan makes a move. And I'm going to say... I'm going to go home or pick and say the Wings make a move. Paul Day is just notorious for making moves all across the season up until the deadline. And, like, it wouldn't shock me in the slightest. Also wouldn't shock me if the Riptide make a move. One way or the other, in terms of acquiring or selling off. And I'd be stunned if Georgia doesn't move at least one player. (laughs) So we'll see what happens. NLL trade deadline is going to be crazy. Um, But I think, Deej, it's time to head over to the pick pond, feed some ducks, and uh, it is going to be our NLL Week 16 picks of the week powered by Trophy Smack. The best in the game in terms of your fantasy smack talk. Guys, there's no better way to upgrade your fantasy smack talk than with our homies over at Trophy Smack. They've got belts, rings, trophies, metal wall art. They've got last place trophies. You want to dunk on your friends in your fantasy lacrosse leagues? Go get a golden toilet seat trophy for the last place finisher. They're the best in the game. Uh, They were on Shark Tank. Mark Cuban bought into them. How you doing? Keep it moving. Uh, You guys can go to trophysmack.com slash underground and start upgrading your fantasy smack talk today. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Today. Right now as you're listening to this. Trophysmack.com slash underground to upgrade your fantasy smack talk Deej we start things off in Calgary a battle of the prairies a St. Patrick's Day tradition the Saskatchewan rush the Calgary roughnecks I know the rush let you down a little bit last week when they lost to the seals but the riptide made it up to you so we split our our opposite games I'm in the boat, though, right now. Calgary's just playing overall phenomenal team lacrosse. They're at home. They're wearing the St. Patrick's Day unis. I can't pick against them right now. Christian Del Bianco's pissed off because his flights are getting delayed, so you know he's going to go out there and be a menace and probably rack up two more assists on the season. Give me the Roughnecks on St. Patty's Day. Yeah, I like the Roughnecks going into this game. Um, I don't know why. I just looked at it and I was like, Calgary, I like it. They're going to win. Um, the Curry, actually, the Courier brothers have been fantastic together since Josh was traded there. Um, I don't think they've lost since then. And if they have, it's only been I think once. It's one loss. Yeah. So they've uh, been on a roll ever since those two have gotten together. So I don't really expect that to stop anytime soon. Saskatchewan could really use a player like Josh Courier. If only they had one. Man, tough. What a concept. Uh, Moving on, even more west in Canada. Vancouver hosting San Diego. I think you guys all know where we're going there. Got to go with the Super Seals. Yeah, no question. Uh, Moving on to 11 a.m., the Wells Fargo Center. Bark in the bowl. Everyone's going to have that dog in them. Uh, best believe that's what we'll be tweeting after every single goal <laughs> during that game. Uh, <laughs> the Georgia Swarm and the Philadelphia Wings. The Wings have two games this weekend. This is their first. This one's at home. The other's on the road. Georgia uh, coming off a 
just absolute barn burner against Rochester, 19-18. Uh, Wings coming off a tough loss, looking to rebound here. In kind of a must win, just looking at the, the landscape of the rest of their schedule. I'm going Wings. It's probably going to be a 13-12 game or 12-11. One of those one-goal games, once again, because that's what it always is. The last six games between these teams have been one-goal games. So if you're a betting person... Trends either continue or they break. I don't know how it's going to go this week. I would assume maybe it's going to be another one goal game, but I'm going with the wingies at home in front of all the dogs. Yeah, I like the wings just because Georgia doesn't look great so far this year. Um, they just haven't looked good, and, and I can't really pick them right now. That's, that's just as simple as it is. Six o'clock Eastern time out in Halifax, a big one, big old tilt, uh, alternate cup question mark style, uh, Toronto at Halifax. Don't know if Challen Rogers will be playing in this game was placed on injured reserve last week. Don't know if it's a long-term injury or not. Toronto still made out just fine against Albany, but Halifax is a much tougher opponent than Albany. I think we can all agree on that. How do you see this one playing out in Halifax in the old Thunderdome out there? I looked at this one for a little bit earlier today. Me too. And for some reason, it's something about the T-Bird that pulled me in. I've been leaning heavy Halifax since I was looking for that earlier. I'm going to have to pick one. I have no real reason other than that. We've got an opposite pick. Toronto's just been playing so freaking well that even without Challen Rogers, we don't know if that's a, a fact or not. Obviously, this week we'll see once the injury report's put out. I just love the way Toronto's playing team lacrosse, similar to Calgary, just at an even higher clip. They're just playing so, so well in terms of like this being like you're the goalie, like Nick Rose is in the MVP conversation. Tom Schreiber is Tom Schreiber, and they just have guys stepping up all across the board. Treasy's having a phenomenal year for them, too. I feel like every single week, Treasy's got some sort of wild transition goal. Um, so I'm going with Toronto to win on the road against Halifax. Next game, Battle of New York on Long Island, Saturday night, Albany Firewolves, New York Riptide. Are the Riptide going streaking, Deech? Are they yes. going to win two in a row? Easy. No question for me. I think they got it for sure. I'm with you. I think the Riptide went, especially if Dunks is playing. That boy nice. It's that boy nice season on the island. Give me the Riptide as well. Then we head to uh, Buffalo, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time as well. Battle of... The NLL Finals last season. The Colorado Mammoth. The Buffalo Bandits. I think everybody knows where we're going with this. Yep. This is no slight to my boys that I picked to win a championship last year. And subsequently they won a championship. They're just banged up right now. They're not the same team. And uh, they got a lot of things to figure out. If they want to make the playoffs this year. Whereas the Bandits are rolling. So give me Buffalo. And give Deej Buffalo. Yep, and we, no question. We keep it pushing. Then we head to 8 o'clock Eastern time down in Panthers City as they host the Vegas Desert Dogs. It's it's the cat-dog matchup. Uh, Panther City is my pick. They're trying to make the playoffs, keep a, a stranglehold on that three seed in the West. Vegas, very disappointing performance last week. I think Panther City is just clicking on all cylinders offensively. They've got enough on the back end defensively to keep it pushing. So give me Panther City. As much as I want to pick Vegas, because I feel like they're going to have a bounce back game, I think it's just going to be close and it's going to be good. But Panther City just has too much this time around. And, and I'm going to have to pick Panther City. Then we move to Sunday afternoon lacrosse. Philadelphia Wings second game on a back-to-back. -back. Uh, head to Rochester. 
to take on the boy, Paul Dawson, and the Nighthawks. Give this me a game, bird. These, these games are always fun, though, just in the general landscape since this new iteration of the Nighthawks have come to be. I don't know what I would set the over-under on penalty minutes at in this game. It's just going to be exponentially high. These two teams always get frisky with each other. So, like, if you want entertaining lacrosse and just entertaining television, watch this game at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Um, until proven otherwise, though, this is very similar to the opposite end of the spectrum when they ended up doing it where the Wings couldn't beat Toronto until recently. I haven't seen Rochester beat the Wings. And I think part of that is that a bunch of those Wings or a bunch of the Rochester guys play for Paul Day uh, in Peterborough in the summer. So he kind of knows their tendencies, knows how they play. Uh, one thing that I have to give credit to for the Wings over the past couple of weeks is they have done a great job neutralizing like the A-star player from, a, from their opponents. A couple weeks ago when the Riptide were in Philly, they did a great job of shutting down Jeff T. They did a great job of shutting down Tom Schreiber on Monday Night Lacrosse. Uh, their defensive scheme has has improved as the season's gone on. I'm expecting that's going to be how they approach Connor Fields in this game as well. Uh, so I'm going to go with the wings in this one as kind of one of those until proven otherwise. There's still two other opportunities for me to see this season as well uh, in this exact matchup. Uh, but give me the wings to go 2 and 0 this weekend in a in kind of a, a must win 2 and 0 weekend. I got Rochester. Um uh, I think they've been way too good this year. They're trying to get back and maintain in that top 3 to solidify a playoff spot for them and they're in a very good space. The vibes are high there. They like being around each other and the energy, so uh, I think they're going to ride that through the end of the year and um Philadelphia is a good in conference test for them to uh you know kind of just bolster their resume and you know play good lacrosse and figure out some kinks for themselves um but still come out with a win in a tough game and i think on the vice versa of that too like this is a good test again for the wings you know to kind of want to keep a hold on that four seat ahead of halifax and a good you know test against a very good rochester team this year to kind of prove that hey we are a playoff team so We'll see how it all breaks down, but these are the pick recaps. We're both going Calgary, San Diego, Philly. I've got Toronto. You've got Halifax. We've both got New York, Buffalo, Panther City. I've got the Wings. You've got the Nighthawks. And those are our Week 16 NLL Picks of the Week, powered by Trophy Smack. Diesel's flip it from the floor to the field. PLL free agency continues to truck along. We've had some retirements, some more signings. Uh, looking across from the last time we recorded, Ryan Oghaven is back with the Archers on a two-year deal. Adam Gittleman is headed to the Boom Squad. He signs with the Cannons on a one-year deal. Uh I forget if we talked about this one or not, but the boy, Treasy's back with the Archers uh, through 2024. Um, Trey LeClaire and Matt McMahon are both back with the Archers, so that's huge for them. And then the news today as we're recording this, uh, the guy, the, the demoralizer, Dominique Alexander announces his retirement. Deej, the floor is yours. I know he was one of your favorite players. We were both stunned by this news because we figured the entire archers rope squad would be back but dominique hangs it up after 11 years pro at the age of 31. yeah it was uh i sent it to you for, as soon as i saw it like i literally saw it and i was like oh send tweet like i got i didn't even know like i had no actual words in the moment um it caught me so off guard but it like the first actual thought I had once I could could collect them was this makes sense on why the unit wasn't signed. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, that I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, is Mark signed? Nope. Maybe he's done too. 
because Treasy signed and then Dominique's Nothing like, else. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he did that shortly after Treasy signed. So it's like. Treasy's the only short stick on the roster, as far as I know. Right. So what, what are we doing here? And, and, and I mean, you know, just speaking on Mark himself, just everything he's done for uh, the inclus- inclusivity movement uh, in lacrosse, everything he's done in terms of being a black lacrosse player, uh, being a short stick, running on both sides of the ball, playing with the machine back in the day in the MLL, uh, being a part of the PLL transfer and, and hearing out their ideas and, and really being one of the driving forces of the the player led social and, and player led uh uh like interaction and, and outbounds of the league he was one of the players that people could constantly get in contact with and see out and about uh that kind of thing so i thought that was huge um and, you mean and we're Donnie, gonna miss not mark yes both of them actually um but speaking on dominique um it, it's just it's hard seeing a black player hang it up and, and just, you know, we, as we saw K18 a couple of years ago, it's just like, these are who we as young black players are like looking up to and, and holding on to and just, you know, have the last few years of being able to talk to him on the sideline or, you know, see him walking by or talk to him and, and ask him a few questions and pressure. Like that stuff's been awesome. I couldn't ask, for for a better opportunity so like that's awesome oh amazing guy treated us with uh the utmost respect everyone with the utmost respect played the game hard um i'm just gonna miss one the trash talk the man could talk his ass off i mean it, it was fantastic um i remember you weren't there because this was salt lake city um when i was down on the field for that archers game i overheard him talking some trash um to uh who who was that Con was that Connor? No, it was uh Ian. He, I overheard him talking some trash to Ian after he had been traded. That was the year he was traded. Two ultimate so, shit talkers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it just just hearing the banter back and forth between them was hilarious. Hearing him chirp his teammates who had just like made made small mistakes like that that kind of stuff you're gonna miss. But you know, I'm sure he'll continue to be around the game of lacrosse and and he's not gonna be forgotten by any means and and we'll see him we'll probably run into him on on the sideline of a game that he's watching uh now that he's retired like we've done with with multiple retired players he will definitely be i would be stunned if he's not in columbus yeah yeah honestly we'll probably see him there so um you know godspeed to to what he's got moving forward and, and really excited to see what that is and you know fantastic career and uh yeah champs always go out on top Another guy who has an open invite to come on the show whenever the hell he wants. Um, moving on to the next squad, the Speculation Nation. Rise up. Max Wayne signs with the Cannons as uh, the Speculation Nation. Uh, myself, you, and Hutton all kind of were like big-brained. It's like, oh, they signed a guy from his college. He's going there. It, it worked. Um the Atlas also re-signed Peter Durth, Cade Van Raphorst. They lose Jacob Fopp to the Cannons as well. Um, Cannons bring him back the GOAT, though. Brody Merrill coming back on a one-year deal for year 19. That's massive. Uh, the Cannons, though, losing a guy to the woods who your boy, KB Sources, broke the news and I, we were thrilled when I when I told you the news because I think yeah I tweeted it just to get it out and then I texted you immediately and said that this was happening and you were like I wanted to bring this up because and I felt the same way because I felt like it was a brilliant move Ryan Tierney to the woods I love this love 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 this for this Redwood squad Absolutely. Um, I think it's it's very similar to a, a Matt Cavanaugh, younger. Um, in my opinion, maybe a slightly better shooter. Um, not as great of a dodger, but that's okay. He can still pass. 
Um, we have Rob, we have Ryder, but he also adds some versatility in that as well. Um, say there's a few games that we like a Joe Robertson matchup. We can bring him up. He can play attack and, and Tierney can run through the mid. Um, or, you know, we just picked up Eli McLaughlin and um, Ryan Lee resigned. We decide we want to throw one of those guys in the middle. Tierney can run the mid. Like there's so many options with a guy like Tierney versus what we had with Matt. We were kind of one dimensional in terms of what we could do with Matt Cavanaugh. So it kind of shaped our offense in a certain way. When you have Matt and Rob, you're you're kind of set up with X Man shooter. Mm-hmm. The other guy has to be a Dodger, and then you got your three midfielders. Like it is what it is. Whereas now this adds some fluidity and we can do multiple different sets, multiple, multiple different things uh, out of out of the offense just because of the addition. Even even without Ryan Tierney, just removing Matt Cavanaugh helped with that a little mm-hmm. bit, but he now boosts that with his skill set. And effectively, you know, the trade happened for Cav and everything. We got the, the draft pick or whatever it was. Effectively, it's a draft pick and Ryan Tierney. <laughs> Um, they have Tierney listed as a midfielder too, which I kind of like. Um, the this offense is going to be so much fun, and I can't wait. We're gonna dive into more signings as well for the Woods in just a minute. Uh, but the boy, which we announced, uh, the bigger news that we announced about this next player is that he's coming on the podcast in the next couple of weeks. Uh, for the first time since 2019, he's never been on the pod with you, Deej, but he has uh, absolutely aerial launched a can out of your hand after he won a championship. Uh, the boy, big body, double eights, Jared Newman resigns with chaos, uh, and he is also coming back on the Outside the Box podcast in the next couple of weeks. We're working on the scheduling and everything. He was obviously in Japan. Uh, so we're working on that. He's back with chaos through 2024. Ryan Smith re-signed today through 2023 with chaos. Uh, and then Austin caught also re-signed with chaos as well as the boy Ian McKay. It's not Ian's contract is not league official yet. It's just been put out there as a report. Um, and he kind of confirmed it. <laughs> with the tweet that I put out. Uh, So Ian's back with chaos. Still kind of surprising. I don't know about you, how you feel about it, that we haven't gotten any rumblings about Challen Rogers yet. I've not heard any rumblings about Challen. It's strange. And and whether he's going to play this weekend or if he's resigning at all for PLL. It's very strange that we haven't gotten anything about his PLL uh, free agency. Uh, Jordan McIntosh going back to Chrome on a one-year deal. Um, looking here. Uh, Matt Hosick, uh reported by <laughs> your boy. KB Source is dropping that one out there for the people through 2023. Uh, re-signs there with the dogs. Dylan Ward is back with the dogs on a one-year deal. Uh, and then... The Water Dogs have just been doing like a bunch of just like we're re signing everybody through 2024 and we're just going to be really fucking good for the next two years. That's pretty much the Water Dogs approach right now, as well as adding Jake Caraway. Uh, Jake Bernhardt re signed with the Whips on a one year deal. Uh, Channy, I forget if we talked about that. I don't know when he signed. I forget uh, if that was last episode or not. But Channy's back with the Whips. Uh, and that's really all the Whip Snakes have done. Hasn't been anything else too much reported out there PLL free agency wise, other than what Deej brought up. Uh, Eli McLaughlin coming to the PLL signs with the woods through 2024. So it's a multi-year deal. I think that's huge. We also got Wes Berg back to the woods on a two year deal through 2024 and the boy future guest on this show. We're working on that as well got to reach out to the boy but we're making we're manifesting my guy jesse king back in the pll signs with chrome off the uh the holdout list those three moves in general 
we can break all those down because they're they're massive in their own rights. Two to the woods, one to Chrome. Let's start with Jesse King because Jesse King PLL career was pre you on the pod because he was only on Chrome in the bubble. I felt like the bubble for Jesse King was like his welcome to the PLL moment. Welcome to like people knowing Jesse King as like a predominant player on that Chrome squad. And then obviously everything happens with the new PLL contracts. He decided to go play, uh, you know, in Canada in the summer to try to win a, a man cup with Victoria. Um, but he's coming back to the PLL. I couldn't be more excited. I love watching Jesse King play lacrosse, whether it's box or field. I think he is so fucking underrated. He's so talented. And I'm just thrilled that he's coming back to this Chrome team that you and I just absolutely love the roster. And he's just another piece for Tim Sudan to just have fun with and, you know, Get him, getting him back, I think, is just... Sudo's got to be thrilled. And adding him into the mix with Logan Wisnowskis, Jackson Murrill, guys that he hasn't played with, Colin Heacock, Malo Dylan Malloy. Like, I, I am thrilled for Chrome. And if you're, like, a full True Blue Chrome fan, you should be through-the-roof excited that Jesse King is back. Yeah, I think this is a great move for them. One for Jesse and you know beginning back and playing more um it's always great when you can want to play the, uh when you can play the game uh, but also great for chrome uh coming off of one they're winning the championship series uh playing very well last season and now they're just bolstering their offense which was really good last year and you know you look at brendan nick turn who might not be playing this year due to military obligations um and just the shuffling of that offense bringing Jesse King back in almost neutralizes that, to be honest. Like, he's that good of a player. We don't know necessarily what kind of production he's going to have this year, but teams are going to respect him in the same way that they were respected Brendan Nickturn. So he could possibly have the same effect. Um, yeah, I mean, his offense could not lose a beat whatsoever after making a move like this. He was scoring relatively, like, well in the bubble. He had five one-point goals in the bubble in 2020 and i was like wow when there's a full season of, of chrome lacrosse jesse king is gonna be a problem and like that was like like i had known jesse king but at that time too jesse was kind of in the shadows of dane doby and curtis dixon and even westberg to an extent with calgary so like you didn't re unless you were a calgary roughnecks fan you weren't like paying attention to jesse king full-blown and then those guys started to, you know, go to San Diego <laughs> and it became Jesse King's team. And now he's in the, the limelight in Calgary. But like, it's so exciting for a guy like that who has that much talent and just a unique skill set. I'm excited to watch him play with this Chrome team. I think he's going to be such a huge addition when he's active on, on game days. It's going to be awesome. Super stoked for the boy. We're working on getting him on the pod. Um just i'm i'm so so pumped that he's back because it was one of those things like 2021 when he announced that he wasn't going to be playing i was like damn like i felt like he was just like starting to scratch the surface of like full-blown like national notoriety not just nll fans not just calgary fans like i felt like 2021 was going to be a full-blown explosion year for him um but i'm stoked that he's back westberg being back with wood with the redwoods is one of those out of left field moves that we didn't see coming whatsoever. Second time that's happened with Nat St. Laurent and Westberg, where it's just come out of left field, didn't see it coming. He's not going to play for his fifth team. <laughs> um, so that's a, a massive development there in terms of Westberg's, uh, you know, checklist of his career. He's coming back to the woods on a two year deal, coming back and reuniting with John Grant Jr. We talked about a little bit, you know, earlier just now, but this Redwoods offense is going to be absolutely bonkos, and I'm here for it. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be loaded, literally loaded. I mean, 
you know, Rob, Miles, Serge, Jules, Eli, Ryan, Ryder, Ryder Ryan, uh, the other Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I said both Ryans. Literally, whoever you're literally talking about right now. Wow. Wes, oh man. Wow. I can't believe I just forgot that. You literally like just said his name. That is bonkers. Um, but yeah, like I'm sure and I'm sure Joe Robertson. I'm sure I'm still forgetting. Technically, John Piatelli's on the roster. Piatelli's also on the roster. Charlie Bertrand. Yep. Uh Nikai. I, I forgot about Bertrand and the guy. The guy's probably gonna be he might be listed as a short stick D mid and just run two way this year. He's a free agent right now, but Anthony DeMeo. Yep. Yep. Like, there's uh, tons of options for this Woods. Woods offense this year. I'm looking at the Woods roster right now, Deej. Um, I don't know if this was announced or known. Matt Rahill is on the Woods roster. Question mark. Didn't know that. All righty. <laughs> but anywho, um, <laughs> not sure how that happened, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Westberg being back is. Bonkers. I don't know why you're in this class. You're not on my roster, <laughs> but <laughs> you can stay for the day, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll figure it out with your guidance counselor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Westberg being back is is huge. And I mean, outside of Rob, every attackman on the roster right now is under the age of is twenty eight or younger. Or I'm sorry, twenty nine. Westberg's twenty nine. So twenty nine or younger. Everyone's in their prime is what I'm trying to get at. Um and then the surprise signing of the day, Eli McLaughlin, two year deal. Plays with Ryan Lee with the Mammoth. Has played with John Grant Jr. This move, I think of all moves, is just like, one, of course this has John Grant Jr. written all over it. But two, how the fuck did you convince Eli McLaughlin to say, hey, I'm going to come play in the PLL for the first time and sign a two-year contract? What Eli. a what a chef's kiss move by Nat St. Laurent and company. Eli, you want to win a championship? <laughs> yeah, I could go for another one. All right, sign them the dotted line. Roll Woods, bro. <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine it was hard. Like, I, I can't imagine Nat St. Laurent and John Grant Jr. calling me and asking me if I want to play lacrosse and saying no. What a move. Just saying. I can't imagine what those a beautiful two people. Move calling any lacrosse player on the planet and them saying that now with this move too, being that Eli's listed as a midfielder kind of makes me think Anthony DeMeo's just going to be free agent and go to the player pool, That's which what it sounds like. That's fine right now. Um, man, like I saw that and I was like, huh? What? Yeah. It's real. Uh, I'm stoked. About that, like he's a he's another big body midfielder. He's six foot one. Finally, have a Canadian midfielder, and they're just bringing in the Denver boys as much as possible. And this is just further and further proof, you know, with Ryan Lee resigning, Westberg coming in, Eli McLaughlin. You're bringing Miles back in. This offense, like John Grant Jr., like Nat was just like, here's the keys, go to work. I mean, what else is he supposed to do? Interject? He's got one of the greatest offensive minds to ever. No, of course, team. but it's like it's one of those like things that's like it it's laid out for everybody to see. Like this is going to be John Grant Jr.'s offense, and Redwoods fans and PLL fans as a, as a whole should be. So excited for what this team is going to do in 2023 because it's oh, going absolutely. to be, it's going to be so creative and unique, and such a mix of 
box and field with John Grant Jr.'s just skill sets and playing career and I I just I want to sit and just like digest it all like I'm Spongebob in the gif eating all the popcorn watching TV just thinking about what this team is going to do offensively yeah I'm excited to see how they roll out you know what kind of different lines they put out who they're putting out there with what what kind of two-man games they're running the sets there's just so much fluidity and, and options and up in the airness with this offense right now all good signs with all of this even though some of those have like a negative connotation all good ways and then thinking in this so um there's not i can go on and on about what i think and what i hope to see but what it really comes down to is what you know what they what they do what they go out and produce so that's what i'm waiting to see the hopes are high they're nice but We'll find out come you know come June what what this offense really has. We got to make like a triple flag shirt where it's thirds on a diagonal, and one third is just the Denver Colorado flag, another third is Redwoods flag, and the other third is the Canadian flag. <laughs> that's just for Westberg. Well, it's that's it's it's the trio. It's Westberg, Ryan Lee, Eli McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> They're the Denver Canadian Redwoods boys. Um, but yeah, PLL free agency uh, has kind of been in a bit of a lull, um, which was kind of expected across the board, where it was like the big boys were going to come off the board. Then you get a lull, get a few more signings. There's still a lot of names out there. Uh, and another retirement happened today as well. John Crawley announced his retirement. Uh, hanging them up. So shout out to Crawley. I think he's going to be another one of those guys that we eventually see coaching in the PLL. I think he's going to dom- you know, go out and, and coach at the college level some more. Um, but I think he, he's going to come in in a couple of years back to the PLL forefront as a coach, as, as an offensive coordinator, um, and, and be very, very special on somebody's coaching staff. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to see just – that's my favorite thing about, you know, people who are done playing is just how they decide to stay around the game. Some decide to coach. Some decide to be coordinators. Some decide to recycle equipment. Like, just whatever they decide to do after is the best part because it shows that lacrosse is not a a sport. It's, it's a – you know, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's a it's – a, a culture it, it's it, it's truly a, the creator's game and you play for more than just the game um, so that's probably my favorite part about all of it is just to see how players choose to stay around the game po- you know post playing 100 percent. so shout out to crawley shout out to dominique and uh pll free agency continues on uh but Deej, we also had pll in japan and women's unleashed in japan um, I think one of my biggest takeaways from the Japan experience is that, uh, no matter what time of day it is, uh, you don't sleep and you just eat from everyone I follow on social media. Them boys were eating in Japan. I just saw so many bowls of ramen on my Twitter timeline and it was bonkos between RJ, Jerry, and everybody else. The amount of bowls of ramen I saw on the timeline throughout the Japan series was out of this world. And I just don't think – I just think they don't sleep. Like, New York is dubbed the city that never sleeps. I truly think it's it's actually – Japan is the country that never sleeps because I, I didn't see anybody ever sleeping on the timeline that was in Japan. Yeah. Like, it was, it was nonstop the entire time. Content was wild. They were going at it. Uh, they're having a good time teaching the game, learning about the game, um, you know, learning about the culture differences, being, you know, in a new space, but also like the game itself was high energy and looked like a lot of fun, looked like they enjoyed themselves. Um, but sp- spreading the game worldwide is exactly where, where we want to be. Sure, uh, it's spreading here in America and we're and we're doing our job here in the States, but the more we get this on a global global level, the the better it can be. And, and 
it can eventually be what lacrosse is really supposed to be. Did you see Homie's phone background that was in the stands? It was just Jerry's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually hilarious. RJ tweeted that video clip from the vlog, and I was like, what is happening? They love Jerry in Japan. Um, Michael Sowers wins the MVP of the game. Romar's quote about how his trip was ruined because there was no two-point line. <laughs> yeah. And his, his Instagram caption was ruined. Um, he said he was going to caption uh, a video's to Kyo. <laughs> Man, just having the time of his life over there. Oh, so funny. Uh, Ryan Ambler is that guy. I I love that Ryan Ambler was put on a uh, a global scale and and just absolutely hilarious clips of Ryan Ambler from Japan. Um, just an awesome, uh, you know, thing to experience through the 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 phone screen. Obviously, with us here. Also, shout out to Nakai's mom for going to Japan. That was so cool. Seeing yep. Nakai's mom in the stands just amongst the people, it was like, yeah, I'm here in Japan, love the PLL, had to come support my son. Nakai's mom rules. Yes. Like, that that right there, like, that's the next level. Like, everybody can't – one, everybody can't do that. Right. Two, everybody won't do that. Um, three, and, and most – Players, no matter how old they get, will tell you they want their parents to do that. Um, so I thought that was amazing. I'm glad she got the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. But Nakai got, you know, got her to be able to be there, and and they got to soak in that whole thing as, as mother son, and people got to see that. And dude, that's what the game is about. That's what the vibes are about. Um, and everywhere she goes, she just is a show. I love She's that. She's an elect. I would love to have her on the podcast too. Not we, that I don't want Nakai to come on, we but Nakai's mom has an open invite to come on OTB whenever she wants. Yeah, we 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 got to we got to put that in motion. We got to put that in motion. I mean, so, we got we got all the the pieces to do that yeah. too. So. We need her on. She is an electric factory. So that was really cool to to see all that. Also, RJ got some of the dopest like Japanese Wu Tang Clan drip I have ever seen. Did you see that jacket hey, that he bought? Fire! That was absurd. And like RJ is like one of the few people who could pull that off. I so shout out to well. RJ. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. That's why I brought it up. Just so, just to so let you know, I died definitely. That man, what? <laughs> I could have went hard with that. I'm gonna find me something like that, just so you can see. Not I even need, for you, because you know I can. You, you, you. I, I need you to find a similar Wu Tang Clan jacket to you know, wear to appeal. You know, what's crazy is like you didn't see me like put out an outfit <laughs> and then go, nah. <laughs> I'm gonna wear this instead. <laughs> You've seen me put stuff on and go, nah. <laughs> this ain't it. Like. You you've seen the drip in full effect. The people just don't even know how much it takes. Yeah, I need you to find a Japanese Wu Tang Clan jacket with tigers on it and I'm wear that to appeal all weekend. I'm Dude, imagine you, imagine you imagine you wore that on the sidelines. I'm gonna find the Bangladesh version. Imagine you wore that on the sidelines as a coach. The other team would just get on the bus and leave. You're not winning when a coach is wearing that. Man, what? Wait, wait till we get these grants this summer, which I'm not gonna say who yet. I'm trying to get them from, um, but y'all do need to help me out, FYI, um, so we can get Matt Black and 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 probably Matt Gray helmets or shiny gray helmets, and just we'll look like a lacrosse team. And then I got that on with some sunglasses, some tomahawk sunglasses, bro, just standing. And you you haven't seen it yet. I'm, maybe I'll pop out next week with it on. We got quarter zips for coaches this year. Black quarter zip with a our gray logo right here. Yeah, bro, yeah. you have that with the Wu Tang jacket on top of that. Good night. Good with night. Fire hat, nice shoes, sunglasses. That's a wrap. 
bro, you need that the Wu Tang uh PLL hat and then some yellow and black like dunks. Good night. Good night. It's a wrap. You know? Looking at all the colors. I could get away with the Avenger band. With black jeans. Not on a hot day, though. <laughs> <laughs> I made that mistake last year. I wore like a, I wore like a windbreaker and like jeans <laughs> on like <laughs> an 85 degree day. Oh, and we were playing on turf. Oh, I'm God, melting. So I, I literally was melting. It was so hot. Water. Uh, water would be nice. But it was, the water was hot. I didn't want to drink it. Like it was that it was that kind of hot that day. That's horrid. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Deej, let's bring it home. It's your college lacrosse week six recap. This week is brought to you by our awesome energy partners over at Dubby Energy, who are keeping us energized all month long for the NCAA tournament and year round because they're the best in the game. They were tired of the big name energy brands packing their drinks with jitters crashing maltodextrin fillers artificial colors and dyes sugars and all the other bs uh and they were tired of these big energy companies favoring profit over quality uh so they decided to wage war on big energy by releasing their own energy drinks, which are cleaner and jitter and crash free. So here's to paving the road for a better future of energy drinks where the status quo is no longer profits over quality, where quality matters and where energy drinks don't get a bad rap for being unhealthy and harmful to consume Deej. And they just had a massive restock, a massive one. And by that, I mean the big energy tears, blue raspberry flavor back in stock in a full tub. Passion Joy Tea, which is passion fruit iced tea, back in stock in a tub. Push and Punch Fruit Punch, back in stock in a tub. What I've been sipping on this episode right here, my kick-ass monkey shaker, the Beach and Peach White Peach Mango Cooler, back in stock in tubs. And on the way, very soon, the one that I've been wanting to try since we've been partnered with Dubby, the Galaxy Grenade Watermelon Guava and Lime Explosion, Coming back soon. And they also have, for the people who may not need the caffeine, but they want to stay hydrated, the Monkey Madness Hydro Hydration Strawberry Banana Flavor. You guys can go to W.GG and use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off. It's a super effective way to support everything we're doing. W.GG, use code UNDERGROUND, clean up your energy, be better with W. Deej, let's get into it. Your college lacrosse week six recap. Talk to me about the landscape of the college game. Well, as the people know, we had a bonkers weekend last week. Bonkers. Started Friday. Double OT with VMI Queens. Uh, VMI stuck that one out 10-9. North Carolina ran it up on Mercer 25-3. Syracuse taking care of business against Albany. I'm looking at the wrong month. Excuse me, y'all. I'm like, hold on. Something don't sound right. Here we go. Duke beat Loyola, which I just want to say, that's a tough game to win, 17-9 to still. As we know about Loyola, they've beaten every other team in Maryland, which isn't normally the case. Um They've actually they've absolutely been on a tear this week uh, this year, um, running through squads that I don't think they should be beating. Um, so that's a very good win for Duke. They're they're finding their momentum and and becoming that team that a lot of people thought they were going to be this year. Penn State with another Ivy League win, um, Ivy League champs? Question mark. I don't know. I don't oh, see why Penn? they can't. <laughs> no Penn, Penn. State. Penn State, Penn State, who has beaten like every Ivy League team in the Ivy. Like, I think every one they've played, they've beat. Um, and they beat them in, in convincing fashion, not like, you know, anything that seems like a fluke whatsoever. They've played very well, in my opinion. St. Joe's finally loses to a team in the Philadelphia area, dropping the Drexel on Saturday by two. Uh, 
Uh, Michigan beat Harvard, which I was extremely happy about, happy about. First time in program history. Six-point dub as well. Um, I, I couldn't be happier, honestly, with the way they played in that game. They looked very good. Um, and if they continue this play into a Big Ten competition, that that six-team conference is going to be a six-team conference this year. And uh, I'll be excited to snag some six-bucks tickets for me and my squad to go and watch a game. Um, Brown in North Carolina was not the game I thought it was going to be. Definitely thought Brown was going to give a little bit more of a fight, but 19-6, North Carolina looked like uh, North Carolina of the old. Villanova getting the best of Penn. Let's um, hop on the Nova train now. They look very good as well in the past few weeks. Um, they're starting to catch their stride, and this wouldn't be the first time that Nova has kind of found their groove in mid-March and then and went on to have a pretty good season and make the playoffs and, and make some things shake. So A new member of the KB on. College Recruitment Tour. <laughs> Definitely. I, I would, I would They've put been Nova added to the list, list officially. Sure. Um, Notre Dame, Ohio State, that one was uh, – Notre Dame pretty much proving they are one of the top two teams in the country. They are continuing to just give teams absolute hell, and, and they are running teams uh, off the field. 16-3 in this game against Ohio State. It was it was an absolute slaughterhouse. Uh, I do have to say this in terms of uh, Notre Dame. I just I got to say, Pat Kev, return, return the emails to our boy Stephen McAvoy. He's trying to get in touch with you. I'm I'm trying to help a brother out right now. Just email him back. You guys went to high school together. He's trying to he's trying to put big numbies out there and talk to you and put out a, a kick ass article. Pat Kev, return the emails from Stephen McAvoy. Shout out to the boy. Shout out Syracuse playing back to back again. Um and almost pulling out against John Hopkins, dropping this one eleven nine. They've played quite a few back-to-back -back games this year. They've done well in most of them, winning a lot of them. Um, they've put out a very good season this year, and Joey Spolina is that man. Um, that, that's just plain and simple. Virginia took care of business against Townsend, 19-12. Uh, Yale was able to beat Denver, 11-9. Denver has looked good, though. They, dry, they keep dropping these games by one or two goals, but let's not act like they're not playing the best competition in the country, and they look very good while – they're still losing these games. Um, is Princeton a basketball school now? Question mark. They drop an OT to Rutgers after they beat uh, Arizona today in basketball. Virginia is obviously a lacrosse school after they lose to Furman today in basketball. Um, so we shouldn't expect anything different out of those two. Maryland played Albany, who also had a back-to-back, -back, I believe. Um, or am I thinking... I'm thinking of the wrong week. Syracuse did not play yesterday either. That's tough that they lost to John Hopkins. Uh, that was a very good game, though, 9-11. Very, very good. Um, Maryland takes care of business against Albany, 16-9. Able to get them back in the win column. They're going to be looking to build some momentum off of that. Tuesday, Syracuse went on to the island, took care of business at Hofstra, got an eight-point dub there. Um a lot of good pictures coming out of that. Ohio State was able to go and get a big win against Detroit Mercy, 19-6, to, uh, to help themselves out and hopefully get themselves back into where they were at the beginning of the year. You know, they won a couple games, looked really good. People thought, you know, they were going to be top 10 for most of the year, and they caught a slump. So a game against Detroit Mercy is a great way to, re a great way to reset. So hopefully that's what they get out of this. And Canisius was able to, to put a slump in the St. Bonaventure to start of their year. That was the end of that week. Tomorrow, or I guess today, when you guys are listening to this, we get the best of the best. North Carolina, Duke, they're matching it up. Everybody knows how good that rivalry is no matter what sport they're playing in. They give it to each other, so that'll be fun. John Hopkins and Navy also. So that's what we get Friday night in addition to – NCAA, March Madness, and uh, NLL action. So all day, your TVs will be going with the sports of action. Penn State Marquette, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, that sounds like at, an NCAA tournament match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> looking at Saturday, Rutgers and UMass. 
Well, it should be a pretty decent game. Harvard Brown, as they get into conference play. High that Point sounds Georgetown. like a human. <laughs> that it sounds does. like an actor's <laughs> name. Coming this summer, starring Harvard Brown. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> High Point Georgetown would be a good one as well. <clears throat> um, really excited for Notre Dame, Michigan. I have thought about uh, making the drive to this game on Saturday. Uh, it's at one o'clock. It's inclusivity weekend at Michigan. They're taking on Notre Dame. That'll be a fun game simply because it's Notre Dame, Michigan. I may pull the trigger and just go to this game anyway. It's an hour and a half away. There's no reason for me not to go. Six dollar tickets. Once again, what reason do I have not to go? DG vlogs. <laughs> My kids are going to be mad because I told them we could practice Saturday. I'm probably going to practice super early. Make them practice at like 8 so I can leave by 10 and still make it to the game in time. And then anybody who wants to come to the game can come with me because I'll buy them a ticket at 6 bucks. <laughs> I'm definitely going to this game on Saturday. <laughs> Princeton and Penn are going to play. That's going to be a pretty good one. Drexel Townsend will be a fantastic one. Um, I just want to talk for a second. They have two of the best mascots in lacrosse, um, just in terms of like how their mascot like actually looks. Mm -hmm. Townsend does a great job of using it. Drexel does not. Agreed. Drexel, please take notes of everybody and how they use their mascot. Even look at Vermont and the way they use their catamount. Like, get it together. You're a make dragon. Some, make some fire content with that dragon. Just just do it. Just don't be scared. No one's going to hate it. Just do it. Um, Maryland, Virginia. They did. I honestly, this could be my teller on how good Notre Dame is for me um, because they went to that triple overtime with Maryland. If Virginia runs Maryland out of the water, I got to say Virginia is the best team in the country. I don't know who's going to compete with them. Um, but if Maryland does give them a tight game like they gave to Notre Dame, maybe Notre Dame is in that same standpoint with Virginia, and this could be uh, a Notre Dame-Virginia national championship game that I would love to see. Cornell-Yale, what a start for their conference play on the year. Looking at Sunday, Ohio State-Denver will be fun. Dartmouth, who I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for letting them fly under the radar so far this year. They're undefeated and have been balling. They're third in the NCAA in ground balls per game at 39.3. And they're playing with high energy. They look good so far. I do think their streak's going to come to an end Sunday against North Carolina, but that's just me talking. We'll see what actually happens when they get out there on the field. But that'll be an exciting game. That'll probably be the one I do watch uh, on Sunday, um, Delaware and John Hopkins. I like the Blue Hens, but that's not a, enough for me to tune into that game, to be honest. We get Monday lacrosse with Air Force and Duke as well, so that's something worth keeping an eye on. Tuesday, coming in, uh, Dartmouth and Hampton will play Harvard, Boston U, Navy and Nova. We're going to take off and, and Bonnie and Syracuse. And Wednesday, High Point, North Carolina, which is always a fun game because High Point normally upsets Duke or North Carolina or both within a year. So don't be surprised to see that happen again on Wednesday. That's when my team has my first game, so I might miss that game. We'll be uh, facing off JV, Vicksburg, 530. Uh, for those of you in the Kalamazoo area, if you want to come in and check that out and, and support uh, – Really excited for my high school squad. But that, that High Point North Carolina game is going to be fun. Shout out to the boy Dan Lomas. That's all we got for you guys. Like I mentioned, uh, Villanova has their hat thrown in the ring for my recruitment tour. But tag more colleges on the tweet machine uh, who you want to see. Join my recruitment tour. Um, make sure you guys are following us at OTB Laxpod, Twitter, Instagram. Follow Deej on Twitter at SCS underscore next great. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We're there. Leave a five-star review. It helps the show continue to grow. We read the reviews as long as they're good, and as long as they're five stars, we'll read them on the show. 
Uh, and of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Smash that like button, ring the bell icon, comment down below your thoughts on everything we brought up on this week's show. We're at 416 subscribers. We're on that road to 500, on that road to 1K. Uh, so go subscribe, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia, and get your merch, PHI Apparel Company, phiapparel.co. Use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any order. It's the most effective and direct way to support everything we're doing. And tag us when you get your merch. We want to see where you're rocking your merch from. This has been episode number 266 of the allegedly award-nominated, honorably mentioned, number nine NCAA ranked, and of course viewable on YouTube, Outside the Box podcast, the official lacrosse podcast on the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network. For Deej, I'm KB. Till next week, enjoy this weekend of lacrosse. If you're in our bracket challenge as well, best of luck to you. Uh, but until next time, we are getting the heck up out of here. Peace. Peace.